Matthew 26. Hang on, we've got a few more weeks to go. Matthew 26. <clears throat> I want you to focus on verse uh, 57 and 58 primarily tonight. Let me ask you a question as you're turning there, Matthew 26. How many of you uh, would say you really follow Jesus Christ? Would you raise your hand and say amen? Well, that was weak. That was weak. That is probably something that all of us have to look at our lives and say, are we really following Jesus Christ? Jesus said to his disciples, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. If you look at verse 57, I want you to look there at verse 57 and 58 because we've got something I really want to share with you tonight that God has really spoken to my heart about. It says, And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to uh, Cephas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Read, read verse 58 with me. But Peter followed him afar off under the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Let me ask you a question. Did Peter follow Jesus? If he did, would you say amen? Amen. If you look there, it says, but Peter followed him what? Did he follow him? Yes. Here's a point I'm trying to get to you tonight. We can follow him, but the question we have to ask ourselves tonight is this. Are we following him closely? Are we following him afar off? And some principles as I went through this chapter here that shows the kind of a barometer reading in our lives to see if we really are following him closely. I believe the Bible teaches us that he wants to be close to us. Amen? Does the Lord want to be close to us? You say, sure, preacher, he lives within my life. Well, there's a difference between uh, a physical uh, closeness and a relationship closeness. There's a big difference. I mean, let's illustrate here. Um, a lot of families can live in proximity in their home and be close to one another, but does that mean they're close with one another? Yes or no? Okay. That is what I'm talking about tonight. A lot of times we think that we're really close to the Lord and we're really far away. Yes, we're following Him. We, 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 would, we would tell people, yes, I know the Lord. I love Him. I go to church. I read my Bible, so forth and so on. But there are some things that cause us to follow afar off. Look back at verse number 58 again. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. What is the problem? Well, let me illustrate through this. How many of you gentlemen, maybe you, maybe you ladies did this too. Have you ever operated uh, one of those cars, you know, it's wireless and you got the, the how many, come on, raise your hand. And they got, you got these little uh, handles on there, you can move the thing around. Many of us have done that. And of course, they've expanded on because many of the techno much of the technology today, uh, with the Wi-Fi systems and so forth, uh, you you got pretty good range, don't you? But even even with all the technology that we have, those cars or boats or uh, instruments that we might play with and so forth, whether it be drones or whatever it might be, they are limited because of their power source. How close they are to us, how close uh, or how far away they might be able to be uh, played with and, you know, uh, zoomed out as far as an airplane. I know Brother Jim, he uh, had, flew those, some of those things and the helicopters and all that kind of thing. But they're limited in regards to how far they would go because if they get too far away, you know, you can't see them and something could happen, couldn't it? 
you and I can be a lover of the Lord. We read our Bibles, so forth and so on, but sometimes we can get ourselves distance because of something in our life. Throughout the Bible, you and I have the teaching of uh, the disciples and also uh, the teaching that God wants us to follow him. He wants us to be his disciples. He wants us to live for him. And these 12 that Jesus had walked very close to Jesus. But there came a time when some of them went afar. They went away. They left him. Now, did they know, know him? Yes. They knew about him. Some of them did, but they didn't maybe know him personally. For example, we know that Thomas, for example, we know that he didn't get saved to the upper room situation. He, they were close physically, but spiritually they were far in the relationship. And I began to study this over and I began to look at it in regards to our lives. And uh, many times we have things that cause us to distance ourselves from the Lord. For example, one of the things, fear of being associated with Jesus. Now stop just a minute. You say, preacher, I would never uh, not want to be close to Jesus in my association well, think about that a little bit, if you would. There could be some instances in your life when you kind of, you know, now not always out physically, but mentally you distance yourself from the Lord because of something that you might face with a, uh, a friend or whatever it might be, and you may compromise in your, your life. So uh, fear uh, in regards to being associated with Jesus. Uh, you say, preacher, how could that happen? How could it happen to Peter? Was Peter one of the strong ones of the twelve? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he was called a pillar. A pillar is something that supports, something that's strong. But Peter found himself because of pride and not being humble. And of course, he learned later because we know that he wrote there in the book of 1 Peter, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. But not being humble can take and make us far away from the Lord. Our fear. Sin, of course, can take and drive our life to have a distance uh, between us and the Lord. The Bible says if we regard what? iniquity in our heart the Lord will not hear us is that being far from the Lord things like that can come into our life whatever the sin might be and the difference from uh, different individuals busyness or distractions can make us afar from the Lord yes we might be close to the Lord we might, we might even be praying but we get busy and we let things distract us from our relationship with the Lord. And then time, the initial excitement uh, of the Christian life uh, can kind of die down in some cases. And, and we kind of lose that fervency that we used to have. Uh, someone asked the question, uh, uh, how does a person get to the place when they backslide? When they begin to neglect their communication with the Lord. Communication is bringing about a relationship. Uh, when Mona and I were uh, dating, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our dating. One of the things that really helped our relationship was her mother. Because she worked for the telephone company. And it didn't cost anything for me to talk to my talk to Mona. I mean, I'd call her up and she'd say, well, you hang up and I'll call you back, you know, because I can get this free. Because she was an operator and she could, you know, could be able to do that kind of thing. Communication helped us. There was a second thing in our communication, not only the fact of uh, the telephone, but also writing. And we wrote a lot. 
That helped. Communication can make us either afar or close. A lack of it, I should say, can drive us away from having that close communication with the Lord. So, you and I have to think about this matter of how far a distance is our relationship with the Lord. Oh, like I said, I would not doubt the fact that you know the Lord and you may read your Bible uh, and, and pray and so forth, but what are the things that might be coming between your relationship between you and the Lord? And I thought about this a little bit, and I look back here at the Scripture. If you look back at the book of Matthew 26, we forget something that's very important in our life, and we fail to have something. Before I share these things with you, I'd like to have a word of prayer with you that God would just drive these things home to our hearts and place them there that we don't take them for granted and then lose that closeness that we had with the Lord. So let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray you teach us by your Holy Spirit. Help each one of us to be quick to hear and quick to react to the things that we hear and listen to from the Bible. And Lord, that we'll be drawn closer to you, that we'll not uh, stray afar. We'll not let a uh, haughty spirit, we'll not let things come between us and you, but we may be drawn closer to you because of the things that you show us here tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, many times you and I take and are, are far, and if you look here it says, but Peter followed him afar off. Why? We forget and fail in our commitment. If you take and you go back here to verse 33, jump back there in the chapter. I had to go back a little bit to get all these things, uh, you know, in order. But uh, the Bible says in verse 33, Peter answered and said to him, Though all men should be offended, now read with me, because of thee, yet will what? I never be offended. You see, Peter at that point had made a commitment. And many times we fail to remember the commitment that we've made with the Lord in our relationship. That is one of the big problems today in marriages. We have failed to remember that commitment that we made. Folks, I still believe in till death do us part. Amen. Could we not make that same commitment to the Lord? A commitment that's going to take more than just a verbalization. It's going to take work. It's going to take time. It's going to take that true commitment. And Peter had made a commitment to the Lord. And the Christian life, above all else, is one of complete, complete commitment to the principles of what God says in His Word. You see, the words of Jesus to his disciples is recorded in Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him do what? Anybody remember the word? Deny himself. That's a tough thing, don't you think, folks? Denying ourselves. Putting our schedules aside, putting our desires aside, not that God want us, doesn't want us to have desires for us, but putting ourselves aside and saying, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And Peter more or less had made that commitment in regards to the Lord. And many times you and I may walk afar off or follow afar off, I should make the expression, because we fail to remember the commitment that we made with the Lord. I wish I brought it in tonight. I didn't. I have a notebook. It's about this wide. About that long. It's like a spiral notebook at the top. And I flip it back. That's my prayer book. And on that prayer book, I have a commitment that I have made with the Lord. Matter of fact, if you would have taken a look at that uh, notebook, you will see the different times I've gone back and I've said, Lord, I want to make a new vow to the, you that this is a commitment I want to keep to. Here's the commitment, if I can remember it totally in my mind. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me to go. 
I'll do what you want me to do at any cost. Commitment. And every time I pull that uh, notebook out, which is just about every day, to pray for other prayer requests that I have beyond some of the uh, other sheets that I have of prayer requests of some of you folks that I'm praying individually for, or missionaries or evangelists or preachers. Uh, usually Sundays are my uh, day that I preach for I pray for evangelists, missionaries, uh, full-time Christian workers, and so forth along that line. But on that front, it reminds me of my commitment to keep me following close to the Lord in my commitment. And many times you and I, we fail and do not follow the Lord the way we should because we fail in that commitment that we made to the Lord. And Peter said, look, I, he says, yet will I never be offended. I will never be offended. There's a second thing there in that verse. We forget about our true companionship and our walk with the Lord. Jesus is a brother, is one that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen? He's there for us. And sometimes we forget that in our walk with the Lord. Walking with the Lord is a very important thing. Take your Bible, if you would, and turn over to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, would you please? And look down at verse number 10. We forget about our true companionship and our walk with the Lord on a daily basis, and we forget that's important. That's something that you and I have to have every day, that we can get His instructions for our lives. Look at verse 10 and read it with me in Colossians, chapter 1. Here we go. That ye might... Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. The Lord wants us to walk with Him. That's important. I point out to you the fact that Adam and Eve, they walked in the cool of the day with the Lord. That was very important for their lives. Were they close to the Lord? Yeah, in proximity physically, but were they close to the Lord in the relationship and the spiritual walk? I don't think so. Why? Because they listened to somebody else instead of listening to God. And what was the result? They sinned. That can happen to you and me when we begin to walk afar off from the Lord spiritually. And that's what happened to Peter here. He walked afar off. You see, the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Every time we walk in the flesh, then we walk afar off from the Lord. So it's important that we make sure at the beginning of the day, Lord, order my footsteps. Let's say that together. Order my footsteps. Uh, the verse that I give so often. And I think we can't, there's certain verses in the Bible that should, you know, come at us constantly in our life. And one in my personal life is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all the ways acknowledge him and, him, and he shall do what? Direct thy paths. He'll give us direction that we don't follow afar off, but we're following close to him. And the Lord wants us to do that in our life, day by day. If we live in the Spirit, let us all also walk in the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Psalms 119, verse 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. Psalm 103. How sweet are thy words in my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. When you and I walk according to the dictates of God's Word, we're not going to walk afar off. That's the reason, folks, daily. Begin your day with the Word of God. It isn't how much, once again I say, but it's a matter of doing it. Before you take off the Word, make sure that you grasp something from the Bible to help you to walk 
in the spirit and not in the flesh. You see, that's what happened to Peter. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. And folks, I guarantee you that can happen to you and me if we don't uh, take a walk according to God's words so we'll not walk afar off, but we'll walk near the Lord. Look back at Matthew 26 and look down at verse number 41. We forget the commandments of the Lord and so we walk afar off. Look at it. Verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is what? But the flesh is what? It's weak. You and I have a contention with this old sinful Adamic nature and when we take and we do not take and listen to what God has said we're going to walk afar off and God gives us his word to keep us near him I was reading the book of Deuteronomy 8 11 let, let me give you the verse beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day the people of Israel, every time they forgot God's commandments, what happened? They went astray. If you went to the age of the judges, and I, I, I tell you, that's a worthwhile study for your life. Because it's a cycle that the people of Israel had to endure. They sinned, they suffered, they made supplication, and then God gave them deliverance. In other words, he gave them physical salvation. And that cycle went on for year after year after year. I mean, you think about the different judges that God gave. And during that segment of time in their life, they walked afar off on many occasions. And God had to bring a new judge in to deal with the people of Israel. And that can happen to you and me. And God brings judgment into our lives sometimes to help us to get from that place of being afar off to draw us unto himself. Look back at the book of Matthew 26 and look at verse 52. What happens? When you and I begin to walk afar off, we've got to check off this next thing that's very important. And that is we become careless in our actions. Look at verse 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Our actions will become wrong. We know who that person was. That was Peter. Peter has struck and cut off the ear of Malchus. And Jesus had to follow through and heal him. But he was trying to show us our actions. Our actions speak so loud that people really can't hear us because they may be wrong. And Jesus says we become careless in our actions. We're going to watch our actions because we're either having good actions that's going to emulate the light of the Lord, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your what? Good works. And what was the end, what's the end result of good works? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. And we're going to be close to him because we're going to let his glory shine through our lives. See? But wait a minute. Look back at verse number 58. If you, well, I should say, look forward to verse 58. So, not only we forget the commandments of the Lord and we walk afar off, we not only become careless in our actions because we walk afar off, but we become a non-witness for Christ when we walk afar off. Look there if you would. There's actually several verses. It begins at verse 58. But Peter followed him afar off on the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses, and then said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And of course, you can go on and read those verses. Jump down to verse number 69. Peter had the grand opportunity of being a witness for the Lord, but because he was walking afar off, he became a bad example. He was not the witness. Verse 69, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But what did he do, folks? 
he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. That was the first one. He could have been a witness to this person here in the, in the verse that we just read, but he denied the Lord. And then it says there in verse 71, and when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were with, with there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. You see, he had the opportunity of two people being a witness to him, and he wasn't. Why? He walked afar off. And it all began there because of the fact of the commitment that he made with the Lord, but he broke that commitment. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, how? With all thy heart, might, soul, and strength. You see, that's what happened to Peter. He became a non-witness for Christ. And then it goes on to say there, in the verse it says, uh, in verse 73, And after a while came unto him uh, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crowed. So he had two women that he had the opportunity to be a witness to, and then he had the opportunity to be a witness to several more people. You see, God will give us one chance after another to be drawn closer to him, to be a witness to him. But when we begin to follow off, afar off, then we become non-witnesses for the Lord the way we should. You know, that time that you have the opportunity to hand a track or say something about the Lord and you don't do it? We walk afar off. So why would a born-again, redeemed child of God decide to walk far away from the Lord? Here's some things. Maybe it's because you've allowed some sin to turn you away. Maybe it's one of those little pet sins. Maybe you failed, have been in, um, uh, unfaithful to your commitment that you said, Lord, I'll do this, I'll do that. And you become unfaithful. Maybe it's because you're afraid he will set your heart afire and, and he wants to have you do more for him. What's wrong with that? I mean, if he counts you worthy uh, to give you a, an additional thing to do. I found this a long time ago. And you probably have too. If you want something done, ask someone who's already doing it. Ask someone who is busy anyway and usually they will say, yeah, I'll, I'll get that done. That's not to say you don't ask somebody that is not doing something to help. But I find most of the time, if I want something done, I ask somebody who's already doing something. Because they're active. They want to be faithful to the Lord. So, you and I, we need to be faithful to the Lord. We need to take and close that gap that we don't let things get in the way. Get focused on what is the cause if you do have a problem being near the Lord. Ask yourself, what is it that I'm doing that's causing me to walk afar off? Matter of fact, ask the Lord. Lord, show me if there's something in my life that's causing me to walk afar off. Is it my commitment? Is it something that's come into my life? Is it some sin? Well, if that be true, and you've heard the verse over and over again, but it's, it, it's something we need to constantly grasp onto, and that is we can confess our sin. If we confess our sin, He is faithful. Can I hear an amen? amen? And just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We all fail, but we can come back to Him and ask Him to cleanse us. And then we need to schedule regular time to communicate with Him that we don't walk afar off and let sin come to our life. And then pledge to go where He leads us in our life. And here's one of the biggest things. We must be careful that we do not become prideful in who we are as far as letting that pride of a haughty spirit come into our lives. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of James, chapter 4. James kind of sums this thing up with three simple verses that helps me as a Christian 
that I don't walk afar off from the Lord. And I'm going to tell you some folks, it's just as easy for the preacher to backslide as anyone else. And here is what we all have to do. Because the devil is always nipping at our heels to try to get us to move away from the Lord and walk afar off from the Lord. Look at it here. Would you look at James chapter 4, and let's begin there, verse number 8, and we'll read down through verse 10. It says, Draw nigh to God, and he will do what? Draw nigh to you. Now, that's the first thing. Then he says, Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. In other words, if there is sin, be open to God with it. Deal with it. There's not a person in this auditorium tonight, or those that are under the sound of my voice, that does not, uh, uh, I should say, have a confrontation with sin each and every day, and we might succumb to it. So he says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, purify your hearts, ye double-minded. He says, look, if, if there's something that you're double-minded about, get that thing taken care of and become single-minded in the person of Christ. Then he says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Then read verse number 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You see, it's so easy to walk afar off. Though we know that we're saved, though we want to read our Bibles, though we want to pray, though we want to witness to other people, it's so easy to walk afar off. Peter did it. And we have other examples in the Bible. This happened to be the section that we're reading there in Matthew chapter 26. You see, Jesus says, look, I am there to help you. And he gives us a warning about the things. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there uh, to convict us of our sin. Uh, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, he can, will convict the world of sin, of unrighteousness, and of judgment to come. We don't have to walk afar off. We can walk close to the Lord and have that sweet fellowship. As I talked about this morning, that God wants to restore to our lives. He wants us to have that fellowship. God wants to be near us. So he says, draw near to God. And automatically, he says, he'll draw near to you. Here's what he's saying. Listen very carefully before I close. If I make one step towards God, what will God do? He'll make one step towards me. So I'm going I'm to run to him. All right? God says, look, it's up to you. I want to be near you. I don't want you to walk afar off, but it's up to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And then we ask some things we have to do. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. He says, I'll draw close to you. I want to ask you tonight. I know you're a follower of Jesus, but how close are you walking with the Lord? Are you walking afar off? Because you let your schedule get in the way? You've let people influence you in the wrong way? You've let your time schedules and so forth and things that you prefer to do get in the way with your fellowship and your walk with the Lord in a close way? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I believe if I were to ask you to raise your hand tonight that you want to walk closer to the Lord, I believe you would. Maybe tonight the Lord's speaking to your heart and you'd just like to make a trip to the altar and say, Lord, I want a closer fellowship with you. I want to walk closer to you. I want to follow you in a close way. And if you're here tonight, you've never been saved the way you get drawn closer to the Lord is by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and it could be this Sunday night that this is the time for you to make that decision to be saved and he invites you to do so he invites you to walk close to him dear Christian to have that close fellowship so what are you going to do tonight? 
Is there a need in your life? Let God have his way in your life. Would you stand with me and let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity once again to come before you to study your word. And I pray that each one of us will learn this lesson, Lord, of having a true fellowship with you because of our relationship that we've established with your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that each one of us will not fail to remember the commitment that we've made with you, lest we let other things come between us and you. And so, Lord, I pray tonight, let us have close communion with you, a closeness of walk, a closeness of talk on a daily basis. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all you mean to our lives. So we pray you bless your word tonight and help each one of us to examine our hearts. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.